welcome to the course on computer design of electrical machine lecture 1 we'll cover i mean course outline and introduction myself professor bhim singh course coordinator well the outline of this course of computer design of electrical machines we'll like to talk about first on course objective then plan of evaluation course structure and overview we'll then we'll like talk to introduction and state of the art in design of electrical machine then history of electrical machine design introduction computer design of electrical machines conclusion and followed by typically references and textbook like well coming to first part of it as a course objective the course objective of this course is to study various electromechanical phenomena useful for design of electrical machines to understand the conventional design formulation and technique for design and manufacturing of various electrical machines as transformers and other rotating machine to introduce different computer design methods for electrical machines their use and analysis method compared to conventional formulation to study various case study and tutorial in electrical machine design well coming to plan of evaluation we will have a two major component in plan of evaluation first first is the assignment so we will consider best out of 12 which will be 25% of the course and we will have a main exam of 75 marks and total marks will be for grading out of 100 like then coming to the course structure and overview uh, this is the course structure overview first we would like to have introduction just course outline in i mean introduction then the second lecture will fundamental of electric motors design uh, having two lectures then we will cover equivalent circuit approach to the design of electrical machines then the transformer design will have a four lecture then winding in winding of electrical machines a one lecture then we will cover design of dc machines three lectures and design of three phase induction machines four lecture then we will cover design of single phase induction machine three lectures followed by design of three phase synchronous machine four lecture i will cover design of synchronous electrons machine three lecture and design of permanent brushless machine covering both the machines permanent synchronous motor and permanent brushless dc motor in five lectures then we will cover design of steel electrons motor in three lectures followed by design of stepper machines in two lectures and we will cover design of axial field machine in couple of lectures followed by computer design of uh, analysis and statistics method in couple of lectures and we'll cover case study as a tutorial and in different machines so followed by this in three lectures so this cover total typically the 42 lectures in the whole syllabus like on now coming to now the first topic of the course or we the introduction to course outline introduction in which we like to cover motivation for the course introduction to electrical machine design then state of art or design of electrical machines general information about the course then syllabus and course content textbook and references and principle of design like coming to the first part fundamental of electrical machine design we we'll cover fundamentals of electromagnetism a materials classification standards and specification then followed by exercise and numerical analysis then we'll cover equivalent circuit approach based required for the design with the electrical uh, equivalent circuit then magnetic equivalent circuit thermal equivalent circuit and followed by uh, you can call it exercise and numerical problems like and coming to the first lecture on the transformer design to so we'll like to introduce the transformer design then transformer classification specification construction and manufacturing process of transformer derivation output equation for various type of transformer and design constraint design of transformer score and then followed by exercise and numerical uh, problems like on the second lecture on the transformer design we we'll like to cover yoke design window design of various type of transformer then design of transformer winding and tangent behavior like thermal the mechanical performance and followed by again exercise and numerical problems like and we'll cover of course on the third lecture of transformer design the performance evaluation of design of design of transformers cooling of transformers and followed by exercise and numerical like then in fourth lecture of the transformer we like to cover transformer design synthesis perspective and computer application in transformer design then in eighth lecture we like to have a winding of electrical machines type of different types of winding electrical machines then winding design of electrical machines the concept of winding factors 
and then followed by exercise and numerical problem type. Well, the first uh, lecture of the design of DC machine, we like to cover introduction and its application, construction of DC machine, then output equation and specific loading, followed by exercises and numerical problems. In the second lecture of design of DC machine, we will cover estimation of various design parameters, design of armatures, computer and process, and design of field system performance parameters of DC machine, followed by exercise and numerical problems. Then in the third lecture of design of DC machine, we like to cover a synthesis perspective and computer applications in DC machine design. And in, then in twelfth lecture, we like to go design of three phase induction machines as a first lecture to as a induction in, introduction to three phase induction machine, its construction rating, design specification, derivation of output equation, electrical magnetic loading consideration and design of three phase induction motor, stator, rotor and air gap. Followed in the second lecture of the three phase induction motor, we like to cover estimation of operating characteristic, magnetic circuit calculation, derivation of column circuit parameters, then followed by exercise and numerical problems. Like in the third lecture of design of three phase induction motors, we like to cover three phase induction motor, a synthesis perspective and computer application in three phase induction motor design. Like then the fourth lecture of design of three phase induction motors, we like to cover numerical problems on main dimensions in stator design and rotor design and numerical problems in induction motor magnetic circuit and performance of uh, calculation. Then in the 16th lecture on the design of single phase induction motor as a first lecture of it, we like to cover introduction application and standard different types of single phase induction machine, uh, then operating operating principle of induction machine single phase induction motor transient analysis. Then second lecture of single phase induction motor machines, we like to cover construction features of single phase induction machine, design of various parts of single phase induction motor and performance parameter determination and magnetic circuit calculation followed by exercise and numerical problems. Then in the third lecture of design of single phase induction machines, we like to cover single phase induction machine a synthesis factory and computer application in single phase induction machine design. Well, in 19th lecture, which is on design of three phase synchronous machines. As a first lecture, we like to introduce to three phase synchronous machines, construction of various uh, typically uh, various types of synchronous machine application and design of three phase synchronous machine with the design specification, output equation, derivation, magnetic and electric loading, armature design and synthesis machine and exercise and numerical problems like. In 21st lecture, uh, that is second lecture of design of three phase synchronous machine, we like to co cover the rotor design of synchronous machine, round, both round rotor and cylinder pole machine and we will like to do magnetic circuit calculation like such as open circuit and full load characteristic, then uh, quadrature and direct access reactances, losses and temperature rise and numerical, uh, you can call it exercise and numerical problems like. On the third lecture of design of three phase synchronous machine, we like to cover uh, a synthesis perspective and computer application three phase synchronous machine design. Then in the first lecture of the synchronous electronic motor, we like to cover the introduction to synchronous electronic machine, application, principal operation and modeling of synchronous machine, electronic machine and design consideration for synthesis synchronous electronic machine and followed by exercise and numerical problem. In the second lecture of design of synchronous electronic machine, we like to cover uh, determination of design parameters such as stator and winding parameters and then we like to have a rotor design like a flux barrier and carrier selections and sizing, performance calculation of design sync of sync synchronous electronic machine followed by exercise and numerical problem. Then in third lecture of design of synchronous electronic machine, we like to cover a synthesis active and computer application in synchronous electronic machine. In the first lecture of design of permanent brushless machine, we like to cover Introduction to permanent machine applications, classification, and comparison of various configuration uh, of the um, brushless permanent machine, followed by a permanent material characteristics and selection and steady state modeling of permanent synchronous machine, followed by uh, exercise and numerical problems. Like then the second lecture on design of brushless permanent machine, we like to cover sizing procedure and main dimensions of the permanent machine, followed by winding selections, air gap, and magnetic sizing design constraints from drive perspective and exercise numerical problems. I will go to design of permanent brushless machines third lecture, determination of performance of permanent synchronous machine, effect of 
field weakening losses and efficiency determination then fourth lecture of design on permanent brushless machines we like to introduce the permanent brushless dc machine application and operation sizing procedure and main dimensions of the permanent brushless machine winding selections air gap and magnet sizing design constraint from drive perspective and exercise numerical analysis and we like to go and uh, for fifth lecture of uh, this design of permanent brushless machines we like to talk about brushless pm machine a synthesis perspective and computer application in permanent brushless machines like then on the first lecture of design of steel reluctance machine we like to cover introduction to steel reluctance machine application principle operation and modeling of steel reluctance machine then design consideration of steel reluctance machine followed by exercise numerical analysis then the 32 lecture that is second lecture of design of cell and steel reluctance synchronous machine determination of design parameter stator rotor winding parameters permanent performance calculation of design of steel reluctance machine then machine and thermal consideration of steel reluctance machine followed by exercise and numerical problem and third lecture of design of steel reluctance synchronous machine we like to cover cell and steel reluctance machine synthesis and computer application steel reluctance machine like going to 34th lecture we like to talk design of step promoter as a first lecture with the introduction working principle and construction classification of step per machines based on construction sizing of design machine and derivation of performance parameter exercise in numerical analysis and the second lecture of design of step per motor we like to cover a synthesis factory and computer application in step per machine design followed by exercise and numerical analysis uh, coming to 36th lecture that is first lecture Sir, on design of axial field machine, we like to talk about its application, design assessment of axial field machine, and then design of assessment of axial field carbon-based brushless machine, followed by exercise numerical problem. Then, in 37th lecture, we will talk about computer design analysis method, then computerization of design procedure, use of graphical tools in typically in computer design of electrical machine, followed by exercise. Then, 36th lecture, we like to talk about computer design and and analysis methods, development of computer programs and performance prediction, introduction to optimization formulation and implementation followed by exercise. And 39 lecture will talk to case study uh, as a tutorials uh, with the modeling of found uh, in the FEM and then DC machine, DC and AC force grabbed in EI core inductor in, in finite element and followed by the 40th lecture on the long determination of single phase transformers operating point in FEM and then to transient heat flow example in FEM and the case strategy and total fourth we like to talk about modeling and simulation of bound net rotor with net stress measurement using frozen probability and FEM machines like. So that covered the course now we like to introduce give an introduction to the electrical machine design to start with. Well to start with the definition of electrical machine design we like to talk a electrical machine is a electromechanical device that comprise the stationary and moving part combined to the to generate transform or utilize the mechanical and electrical energy. So, electrical machines are used in applications like transportation, aerospace, defense and industrial automation. Well yeah, we like to classify it based on supply type of this these machines. So, first we like to talk about AC machines with two classification like induction and synchronous. Induction again we classified like sing, polyphase and single phase. In polyphase we call it like pound rotor or the typically a double fed and square cage. And the single phase of course we have a shaded pole capacitor type motor which further classified capacitor start, permanent capacitor, two value capacitors, multiple, multiple speed and single speed and followed by split phase and reluctance to start. And of course, in synchronous, we again have a classification of single phase and polyphase with bound field. Uh, and uh, in bound field also, we have a two kind, a typically cylindrical and cylindrical pole machine, then bound grid machine, then synchronous reluctance machine, hysteresis machine, and followed by multiple speed pole switching machines like. So, that is the classification of AC machine. Similarly, we have a classification on DC machine starting with uh, sunt series and compound uh, and with the split phase and permanent machine again with the typically you can call it moving coil and DC torquer and conventional construction. Followed by another classified machines which called electronic scale control machines like a stepper motor which is further classified in three category like uh, electronic type stepper motor, permanent type stepper motor and hybrid stepper motor. Then we have a typically synchronous phase 
lock loop variable frequency motor like synchronous motor induction motor and wound field pump magnet and stator control rotor control and brushless dc motors again inverter fed electronic commutator fed with the square wave excitation and sine fed excitation and followed another is the silicon machine this also comes in a special category of the machines we classified like i mean they are virtually controlled by uh, polyelectronic converters like well coming to further more detail on this motor cross section view you can see here the first is with the dc mount field with the brushes and the second is ac synchronous machine where normally we have a field rotor or field excitation system on the rotor and armature on the stator and then we have induction machine normally majority of the machines are of physical cage leaving some exceptions of like a w fed induction generator also followed by a dc pump magnet brushless brush pump magnet brush dc motors normally use a large number of applications like auxiliary in even in ev as well as in your uh, cooling fans typically in computer peripherals like then we have pump magnet brushless ac motors of both the kind pump magnet brushless uh, sine fed motor and pump magnet brushless dc motors like uh, these are pump magnet brushless you can call it square wave and sine fed and synchronous electronic motor like well uh, then another category is electronic motor as you can see it here that the normally uh, stator on stator we have a, a concentrated winding with a different number of poles on the rotors like maybe a combination of your 8 by 6 or 6 by 4 or 12 by 8 so three constructions are quite popular in three phase four phase and five phase as you can see here well coming to the typically the major constituent of electrical machines are typically the housing as you can see here in the photograph then stator followed by rotor and the windings typically in the normally in stator and many more parts like fan covers then you have end seal followed by name plate uh, then you have a junction typically conduit box and windings base and frame size and other parts of this like as a, a concept like and these are typically a name plate of the this kind of machines where we have a normally high horsepower or kilowatt followed by the typically volt rating frequency rating speed rating class of insulation then we have a typically a type of uh, cooling as well as efficiency is also marks after now and the kind of environment it has to be like closely totally closed or semi closed or different kind of and type of duty and number of phases in the machines like well you can just see how look like a parts of typical parts of this motor assembly we have a stator steel laminations stamping with the different slots here in which we put the winding if you see on the right side how the winding is placed conductors or coils are placed in these slots on stator winding of this typical induction machine or synchronous machine then you can have a different parts of this let's say ac machine of a square gauge induction motor as you can see rotor assembly which is made either with the copper bar or it can be with the aluminium bars with the die casting i mean like and then you have a typically the stator frame followed by stator winding with the stator laminations and finally finish motor with the housing and frames as you look into different parts of it like well we have another kind of motors we call it brush dc motor where you have a armature on the rotor with the slip rings and commutator i mean which really responsible to either feed the power in a motor or to collect the power from in case of generator and of course on stator we have either the field winding or we have a pump magnet typically on the loop of pump magnet on the stator like which has support to provide the uh, you can call it the uh, a kind of static field which is really responsible to produce the flux in the armature winding like I mean. and then of course you have a typically the brush arrangement to collect the current from the assembly is like a, you can call it pump magnet brush dc motor like then you have a different parts of this you can see I mean the here with the commutator periphery assembly and assemble complete assembled motor DC motor. I mean you can just see in different parts of it. I mean. Then you have a outer uh, outrunner parts of this typically of uh, this machine as you can see the uh, your permanent brushless DC motor winding on stator and mag magnets on on the rotor. I mean and uh, with the side plate cup plates and other parts of this like. I mean. Then you have a, like a, the difference as you can look into that how it is a pungnet machine. The pungnet are put in the rotor in different part, and on induction you have a square cage rotor on different part. Then you can just see typically pungnet synchronous motor, 
where you have a even the saliency with the flux barrier and pump net put material put on the rotor and the winding on stator and this we call pump net brushless synchronous motor which are used boom a large number of application ev industry which are coming up in general by gm motors is a typical example here so here we use the saliency as well as uh, typically the pump net on the rotor like which really increase the power density this is of course the another ev traction motor of pump net brushless typically dc motor which are used in uh, typically in hybrid vehicle again magnets are on the rotor and armature winding on the stator and you can just see how compact is the machine typically made corresponding to little on higher speed i mean so that the size is reduced in the of this machine with of around 300 kW or all of that then we have a typically large rating synchronous motor you can just see how it is a cell and pole synchro machine the field winding is on the rotor and armature winding on the rotor you can see the cut parts of the synchronous motor shop like then your cell and synchronous cell and pole rotor where nowadays we are using like a flux barriers on the rotor with the very perfect design normally operated with the variable frequency drive that's why we don't have any winding or cage on the rotor only we have a flux barriers which provide the good characteristic of the machine with the high your ld upon lq the saliency of, on the machine and certainly it give a very high efficiency much higher than induction motor and use in variable frequency or variable speed applications like then the stepper motors where we have normally the three types of motor which i already earlier discussed it that you have a on the rotor either saliency or you have a pump magnet or you have a hybrid construction so all these construction are there so but winding is put on the stator concentrated winding on the different poles like normally stepper motors are used normally large number of application with the incremental motion including the typically the you can call it the uh, even mp4 mpbt of the solar panels to keep the panel towards the sun and other machine tools applications and lot of aerospace industry typically for opening the solar panel and keeping the panel towards the sun uh, in the satellites and other uh, you can call it uh, kind of such applications like and this is typically you can call it pump net type of uh, in a hybrid stepper motor where the two stacks are there and this is very interesting machine where we have typically axial flux as well as the radial flux so from stator it comes like a flux come radially and then in the pump net the flux move in the axially in the rotor like um, and this hybrid stepper motor is considered a one of the excellent motor in stepper motor where it give a high torque density i mean for even giving a very compact size as well as the i mean quite good uh small step angle typically for various applications like these are this is the slide which talk about the different motor manufacturer i mean starting from siemens toshiba abb a big giant including hitachi and typically johnson electric or so now coming to the application state of part on the electrical machines like if you look into starting from generator applications we talk about the thermal power station or stem based power station where we use the synchronous generator here you just find the machines varying from in a turbo generator manufactured by siemens especially uh, from 540 to 1300 mva even stretching more than now 1 gigawatt kind of the generator like um, or so then you have another kind of steam generator as a turbo generator manufactured by mitsubishi then for nuclear power and then you have a large hydro power generator of 700 megawatt hydro generator which we call it water wheel generator normally even you can see 16 meter diameter and even the only the 91 rpm very low speed are i mean this um, you can call it a water wheel generator like then you have a nowadays we have a like a renewable power generation we have a wind power generation of both the kind of either offshore or onshore the wind turbine and the highest rating has gone even here you can see the typically of 7.5 megawatt and 8 megawatt but by such has will up already about 15 megawatt dfid also for this so uh, there are different kind of machines here conventional cell and pole synchronous machine then pump net synchronous machine as well as the w fed induction generator i mean the machines are for wind power generation like then the machine used for large wind generator as you can see look into as a synchronous generator which i mentioned it typically anarcon is manufacturing the conventional synchronous machine in cell pole construction with large number of poles so that you can avoid even the gear here because you can design the cylinder pole synchronous machine very large number of poles for to operate at very low speed with the we call it direct drive wind turbine generators like then of course we have a 
typically a 12 to 14 kilowatt capacity by G uh, as a you can call it like a DFIG, W fed index generator for even for offshore and onshore applications like. Another large wind generator, typ uh, typically another large wind generator with high temperatures work on the generators which is under the typical research because you give a very high efficiency of the machine. Like. Then of course, that both kind of the turbine generators with the pumping rate synchronous generator and the square case generator and switch electron generator with the you can call it the horizontal axis turbine and vertical axis turbine. Of course, vertical axis turbines are normally used in the places where the sand is there like typically in the Middle East I mean and of course, the horizontal axis are used in different parts of the world. I mean, they, they are of quite low start from very low reading like I mean. then of course, we have a small generators for micro hydro and pico hydro power generation with pumping rate synchronous generator which have a specific advantage. Of course, some people use the spell case generator with the uh, typically the belt pulley arrangement to increase the speed of the generator so that size reduce but pumping rate generator can be directly coupled for even for low speed small hydro generator which are used in different parts of Himalaya region, Nepal as well as the northeast part of India. Like, um, then coming to next part of the electrical machines which is typically the transformer like a power transformer which are house closer to the uh, you can call it the power generate generation power generating stations and you can see the typical photograph of your 300 mv transformer with the even the voltage up to 765 mv like another transformer which is biggest transformer in the world of at the 1100 kilo volt used normally by Siemens in H in hvdc converter in hvdc transmission line also we use a transformer on both the side which are used for multiple purpose the very purpose is to step voltage and step down voltage depends on converter station whether it is on generating side or it is on typically on utilization side and another advantage of course is to increase the number of pulses in the converter with this same transformer type. Then we have a power transformer with the inter tie transformer used for typically for the fax applications I mean uh, for multiple purpose like then you have a distribution transformers in a low voltage distribution system, primary distribution, secondary distribution or even the single phase transformers used in some of the country for even a single phase distribution system. Like. So, now coming to some of the industrial and commercial applications of these electrical machines starting with induction machine for use for industrial water pumping system, then the crane and horse with different duty like S3, S4, S5 duty motors, huge induction motor as you can see in the photograph followed by typically electrical machine in lift an elevator system, use all these induction motors, synchronous motor, magnet synchronous motor. I mean, these of course, magnet synchronous motor used for high efficiency. Of course, all these now use the variable frequency drive, like um, also, which really in increase the typically the comfort level for controlling these lift and elevator system. But from that, it gives the good efficiency also. It save a lot of energy even with the throw regeneration also in these applications. Like then the conveyor system with the induction machine and permanent synchronous motors and of course, for is very small motors we use typically a motor and DC motors for this conveyor kind of application. Then another application is paper mills where we use the synchronous motor and induction motor with variable frequency drive and permanent synchronous motor I mean in new installations like I mean. Another application of these electrical machines is especially servo motor and induction motor with variable frequency drive for typically in printing presses and then ball mills especially the synchronous motor induction motors. Then in mill drive we use the synchronous motor and induction motor with variable frequency drive. Apart from that we have here the typically the you can call it bucket wheel evacuator used for open pit mining or mining industries we use like ABV is using the variable frequency drive for different kind of motors like especially brushless motors. Then hot and cold drilling mills for uh, metal processing with the synchronous motor cell and pole as a low speed and square cage induction motor with variable frequency drive. And the other applications is typically of assembly line is the robotic arms with the machine of fish type motor, permanent brushless DC motor, permanent synchronous motor for different machine tool applications like or for automated industry applications like. Another is the assembly line for automation for typically for conveyor line with the super motor, permanent motor and permanent synchronous motor followed by a DC servo motors like uh, the some other application industrial actuator used in valve and fixers and pumps especially the DC motor and DC servo motor and the stepper motor. The other set of application is CNC computer controlled 
uh, lathe machines in mechanical constructions like uh, uh, typically and uh, stepper motor, servo motor and AC machine, uh, permanent synchronous machine, induction machine and base slash DC motor. Well, other, other applications are commercial heating ventilation application in heat pump where we use the gauge induction motor with variable frequency drive and synchronous electric motor and permanent motors with variable frequency drive. The other commercial heating ventilation energy system we use typically like chillers machine with the gauge with variable frequency drive. Then the typically in commercial heating ventilation system like air, air handling machines with again square gauge induction motor and permanent synchronous motor with variable frequency drive. So, these are the applications of commercial. Now, we are coming to some of the residential applications or appliance industry. Typically, the residential applications start from the pump. So, we have a different kind of pumps like where you use a small rating, we use the single phase. Uh, you can call it the typically submersible pump and three phase induction motor. And now, we are start using a permanent brushless motor and permanent synchronous motor in as well as electric motor in this one pumping application even with the introduction of the solar energy in remote places like. Then we have another application for typically ceiling fan applications which are in tropical country like India is a large number. India itself every year uh, have a manufacturing of the fan, ceiling fans typically around 3.5 crores. Normally use the single phase induction motor and now we start using permanent brushless DC motors because of the low power consumption of around less than 35 watts like or so. And of course, people have developed like electric motor as well as the synchronous electric motor for this uh, these fan kind of application, different kind of scaling fan applications like. Another application for the appliance industry like typically washing machine where we use the typically initially we were using like a kind of for different applications universal machine then single phase induction motor and permanent synchronous machine directly typically direct drive without the gear. We can design the permanent machine with the low speed for direct drive. Then another is the exhaust fan where we use single phase induction motor and of course, permanent brushless DC motor like for energy efficiency nowadays. Then we have air conditioner applications for compressors with single phase induction motor uh, as well as permanent synchronous motor like. Then air another is in blower, especially in air conditioner, we use normally single phase induction motor. Then the, again the blower of air conditioner application single phase induction motor and shaded cold induction motor. Then in the refrigerator. I mean, you in the compressor we use single phase induction motor and now permanent brushless DC motor also used for energy conservation like. Then the other application like vacuum cooler we use universal motor. Now we start using the VFD with the induction motor as well as permanent brushless DC motor. Now coming to state of our electrical machine especially from Dyson is the fastest electric motor with the usual torque. Dyson digital motor is a single phase brushless DC motor which operates speed up to 104,000 rpm with claimed efficiency about 84 percent and design over 15 years. So, it is a basically handheld vacuum cleaner application like. Another further improvement in the design, motor design over the time is the modern version of this DDM with a speed of 125,000 rpm like. Now, huge for hand of hand held vacuum cleaner application which require a larger speed. Now, coming to typically electronics appliances. Uh, like a computer peripherals, we use now normal, normally the typically cooling fans, which normally we have a permanent brushless DC motors. Then the, we have the disk drive, floppy disk drive, there also we use the permanent brushless DC motor drive with the sensorless control. Then another kind of permanent disk drive, again we use the permanent brushless DC motor because of high efficiency and ease of control with the sensorless control. Line. Then we have a disk uh, injector using the stepper motor. And now, typically, the permanent servo motor is also used in that. Well, coming to a very important application of these electrical machines or typical electric motor is the mobility and transportation system, starting with the electric vehicle, where in four wheeler Tesla I used initially the three phase induction motor and then start using now permanent, bus, permanent synchronous motor followed by synchronous electric motor and use as a direct drive or with the central transmission system. Then other machine especially for generator, I mean like uh, typically for all the typically automobile we use the generator, brushless generator which is of special design called flat hole generator as well as uh, typically we use I mean like a, this is special construction for brushless electricity generation for the battery charging for even normal automobile applications also. 
this kind of brush stroke generator. So, I get really about the earlier we were using the Dynamo which have a brush and competitor. There was a lot of failures which completely eliminated by this new technology uh, typically a flop hole type construction in with the permanent excitation for these alternator small alternator. Then we have a interaction the turbochargers where we use the permanent motors and high speed require around 100,000 rpm. I mean with the gears we use this and size of the machine get reduced if you really design machines for such high speed. Then we have a two wheelers electric traction two wheelers where we are using the permanent brushless DC motors as even the direct hub motors in those applications as well as single stage gear also we use. The other is applications is the magnetic levitation system where we use the linear permanent uh, motors I mean like for high speed transportation system in many country of the world uh, in the trains which run for 80 km per hour like. The another application is typically for permanent machine we use in electric aircraft or you can call it fully electric craft and especially uh, recently the drones have come with using the typically a different permanent machine which have a high efficiency and low power consumption. So, these are all operated with the battery so you can call it power drive. Then we have a electric power consumption system uh, ships and boats where you use the permanent and induction motors of course, brushless motor and the rating goes as high as like up to 5 to 25 megawatt uh, typically all these air cruise and ships like. Then we have of course, the mobility applications with the electric wheelchairs where we use the permanent machines and uh, DC, DC servo motors for different parts of movement of this wheelchairs like. Now, there are many miscellaneous application of this electrical machines where of course, we use very uh, typical machines starting from defense applications for servo motors, system motor and actuators, I mean for missile and other applications. Then of course, we have a medical applications like heart motors or pacemakers we use or even the dentist typically drilling machines I mean we use this all small electric motor with the high speed there. And the typically another application is the robotics applications I mean you use the different motors for each degree of freedom we use typically a one electric motor slide. Well, coming to now typically again to of course, as a part of design for electrical machines the good engineering design is the head of all applications. So, engineering design is the applications of science, technology and invention to produce electrical machines to perform specific tasks with optimum efficiency and economy. So, primary objective to maximize the efficiency while providing suitable durability and avoiding the undesirable noise, vibration, access cost and necessary weight for different applications. And these electrical machines comprise of several parts physically assembled together to work as a single unit. This physical realization of complete machine has to meet the required performance condition and optimum efficiency and economy. So, therefore, the main principle of design can boil down to one thing to obtain all the physical dimensions of all the parts of the machine which is used to design it using the available materials at optimum cost, size and weight without compromising performance and durability. Any design process involves a lot of engineering calculations done in an iterative manner. So, when designing a ma electrical machines, one cannot apply rigid rules to get the best design for the machines at the lowest possible cost. So, decision uh, has to be taken uh, under the conflicting requirement and these three factors of design can be given as economy, durability and compliance with the specification and standard like for a particular machine. So, designing a machine to meet out all the three factors is a highly almost like impossible. So, for example, a highly durable machine will increase the cost of the machine as it must be made high quality materials and the compromise between the durability and economy is required depending upon the application besides certifying the required specification and standard. And compromise is a required between the ideal design and the design which will comply with the manufacturing conditions or constraint. So, therefore, one should understand the limitations of design and should make appropriate choice of electrical magnetic insulating material subject to the availability characteristic and cost consistent with the specification. Well, the design factors are like economic, uh, most important lowest price is always wins, but lifetime cost is getting more important than the sales price. And the second is the material, typically if magnetic material soft and hard, especially electric, electric material, insulating material, determine the limits and are continuously improved. And specification like a standard of for the size, speed, voltage and current uh, and other like temperature rise other specification. 
and special factors are reliability, size, weight and noise and technical factors are main design features like. So, coming to the main design features as electric, I mean we have typically like now number of electric circuit decided normally by number of phases, type of winding, current density and the in magnetic circuit we have a magnetic plug density, iron losses, inductances and dielectric especially the for insulation, we have a strand to strand insulation, we have a coil to coil insulation, coil to ground insulation, electrical background and routing and we have a then thermal circuit like a coolant air heat cooling, water cooling, then calculation of temperature I. and then we have a mechanical typical parts like critical speed, accosting, moment of inertia, forces during short circuit also. Now, coming to the history of uh, electric motor design becomes typically a major milestone of 17th century development as a history of electric motor design. Uh, typically, the William Gilbert wrote the magneto theory through that concept of magnetic poles of north and south pole. He was the first to describe the phenomena we now associate with the electrical attraction and magnetic poles. Hello magnets and power magnets are the vital parts of electrical motors even today. Well, the another concept came from Andrew Brown and Benjamin. Before the invention of electromagnetic motors, experimental motors that work by electrostatic force were investigated, typically with the, defined as electric force here, uh, Q1, Q2 upon 4 pi eta R square, as a typical example shown the in the photograph, the basic concept of this machine, which is published typically in the recent papers of electrostatic rotating machines, like I mean, some of the people are still working for. Uh, you can call it of electrostatic machine in addition to electromagnetic machines like. The later of course, in 19th century development have been invention of battery provided constant current force uh, by a typically inventor of electric battery have been Volta and in and of course, they given the discovery of uh, electromagnetism and developed Ampere law by Andre Mary Ampere and Michael Faraday of course, discovered in 1831 electromagnetic induction led by the modern electromagnet electrodynamics principle with typically of flux and typically the your industry MF like. Then coming in, in nine, another I mean milestones of 19th century with the William Sturgeon made the first computer type DC electric motor followed by another Jacobi DC motor the resemblance with the modern DC motor start with so and of course, major name in DC motor have come than Emil Lange and followed by Jung German and then Werner von Siemens in 1892, I mean like. Then of course, the other development in 19th century have been a big in the machine, the electrical machines history, especially Frank Julian and it was so DC motors found their widespread use in traction and generation system. And of course, then we have a wall called war of the currents like DC and AC war, which was the series event surrounding the producing the competing electric power transmission in the late 1880 and early 1890. An addition offered DC instant lamp and the high voltage AC arc lamp system. Westinghouse offered AC system, which were stepped down the transformers LVAC. And this finally, of course, we got the, of course, led by George Westinghouse, the AC won the AC won the war of this DC AC. Like, so of course, it was the war of current AC versus DC. So primarily, the difference lie in the flexibility of transmission. AC system can step up the voltage using the AC transformer for long distance transmission as well as reduce the power loss in the cable. So, it allowed the uh, generation at optimum voltage, utilization of optimum voltage and transmission at optimum voltage. At the same time, DC system were unable to shift voltage as easily and seamless transmission from AC generator to usually allowed AC to win this war and AC power lines over the street have come in to New York in 1888. Then of this uh, major contributors of this AC after S1 is why the Hungarian engineer invented the first high efficiency closed code sun transformer followed by Stanley who developed the first practical AC transformer and Nikola Tesla uh, he sold the his polyphage induction motor or generator patent for to Westinghouse and George Farage is typically uh, obtained a patent open for Galileo Ferranti on induction motor design. Then of course, the Tesla invention have been a milestone for typically of this induction machine of two phase as well as typically of three phase induction machine and it has been by his patent which appeared in 1887 like. Of course, there have been a lot of other development like typically Michael Dawesky 
financed the development of three phase induction motor in 1889 and sold the low starting torque issue in skull cage induction motor which and slipping induction motor introducing by slipping induction motor like well other development of history of induction motor in north america have been alger uh, they discussed that 10 100 horsepower motor in 1897 had the same dimension as 7 point horsepower in 1976 and this was about 50 years ago so today with the development in material science manufacturing method and polyphonic drive the design improvement of these motors have a never ending process like followed by then we have a typically the invention of this in of three reluctance motor in typically in 20th century 1970 which of course are supposed to be the control by electronics devices especially the IGBT and MOSFET and 1970 is the first blow and 1980 of course the Britishers have brought even for large rating railway applications this is Sri Lanka motor of course there is a history of Sri Lanka motor in second world war used also for different purpose but that time of course power converters were not available they used the mechanical computers for the energizing this machine like which is today is a big uh, Sri Lanka machine for different applications especially for vehicle industry and single electron motor as a another discovery which came recently typically around a decade before like so then we have a permanent motors Permanent British motor and permanent synchronous motor, where the we put a permanent on the rotor. So it's an inverted form of typically you can call it of DC motor, where we brought the permanent on the rotor and mature winding of the stator. And this motor proved to be a very efficient motor and now used in large number of applications. And of course, there is only the constraint is uh, two constraints. One typically use the permanent material, which is only some part of the world. Another restriction is that it use the power converter. But do both these things are really reasonably distinct develop at the fast race of many applications such as electric vehicle and appliance industry like now coming to typically standard in electric machines so there have been international standard which is called IC standard international electrotechnical standard which is start with IC3 and there are some regional standard local industries like in European term standard name in American NSI American national standard and I typically give a guideline for and national standard of Germany is VDE then SA Finland SC in Sweden and Dean in Germany and BS in Great Britain and of course in India we use like a, uh, typically the BIS Bureau of Indian National. So now coming to like introduction little bit introduction to computer design of electrical machine how we can use the computers for design of electrical machines so uh, there is a lot of now use of digital computer of in design of electrical machines so design covers the wide span of practical efforts from a initial sketch a plan to well de detailed drawing and a prototype on installation this is due to development of lot of software available for this for first defining then identifying then brainstorming then selecting the proper solution then prototyping then testing then of course we again to do iterative manner to improve further the design to come final but of course with the introduction of the digital computers and present day tools we are able to reduce the number of iteration in the prototyping by proper designing before we go to prototyping or final manufacturing of the these electrical machines like you can call it design is something between idea and product the so world design can describe process as well as state of art process and we call it like a computer design initially we were having a process simple a concept idea and then finally using computer for this so design can have a specific orientation or a site of improvement such as design of manufacturability electromagnetic performance reliability and so on typically we call it orientation goals and finally ob to objective the breakdown of design process is further to understand is the goal of the design process is to develop and to formulate the understanding of the functionality of the electrical device or electrical machine a design problem have to be formulated considering various constraints processes availability of material and quality aspect cost aspect as a prime consideration so it is important to establish good understanding on the energy conversion process to improve the design of electrical machines like so is the trade off and errors are there is a trade off between the ex exhaustiveness and the time spent of creating the model and modeling itself so target is that the model is accurate and fast enough so we have a ideal result but we have a design process starting from typically final reaching to the target as engineering solution like so now if anything could go wrong with manual or computer based design the wrong data is supplied to the problem specification is and then the procedure using software are not accurate enough and the assumptions inherent in the procedure are too 
approximate the user does not have enough knowledge to interpret the result or misuse the software so user designer knowledge is decisive in the design process of course uh, and multiple domain of knowledge very is needed because you say in the analysis process of design we use virtually the decision, decision are taken by the designer so designing normally require considering the design requirement and to look for the best solution which is additionally an optimization process where a target is such lightweight construction cost efficiency reliability of other and other requirement like objectives and our focus on typically design we go with the leading of optimization so initial design is followed by its optimization based on different criteria to improve the design and finally getting the optimum we call it optimum design so here is typically the different you can call it the parts of it especially with the electromagnetic so here we have a typically starting overlap goals and criteria that influence the design and here are the three examples showing in various variety key factor and they are sometime conflict like functionality manufacturing and reliability then material engineering production technique and electromagnetic design and then of course we have a thermal design and manufacturing tolerance with cooling te technique like so you can call it domain of electrical machine design consists of machine mechanical design it involves the design of frame shaft and bearing and design of should be robust and then we have thermal system design which is very crucial for the life and death of the machine it includes the design of cooling system ventilation duct and so the heat generated is minimum and most of the heat is properly dissipated in the environment then we have a dielectric system dielectric system it deals with the design of insulation required to isolate various parts of operating of different potential and conflict current to particular parts or conductor and we have electric circuit design that's a winding design it deals with the design of armature and field winding such as required emf is produced within the least copper loss and of course we have a magnetic circuit design it must establish the required flux within the minimum ampere turns or excitation with the least core losses so these are different you can call it like a parts of basic component of this machines typically consisting of about five parts of this or so now we can call it the classification of design problem we can classify it in the manner a design process have a following distinguish step the physical understanding the sense of physical system then mathematical modeling description of system and structure through analysis focus on consequences of its part especially the calculation and then synthesis part to take the decision by the itself by logical decision focusing on positive like pile up and the cost function like optimization focus on improvement of the design so designer seeks for or explore the optimal or the most reasonable combination of structure material and functionality of a device and coefficient cost efficient solution is usually more crucial than the technical optimal device the typically flow chart of the design typically processes of a as a work huge flow it typically start from here the real device then modeling mathematical model like computer simulation then with the theory and theory prediction and computer data then comparison ventil verification of by the theory and verification of model by simulation then comparison and coming from from real device measurement and experiment so we have to verify this design after designing even from the after validation of many way theory and from computer simulation and by practical implementation to validate a complete design procedure like as if this design problem like so coming to what is the need for computer for the design of this electrical machine any design problem involves several assumptions and constraint and solution can only be obtained using iterative methods and in any practical design the number of variables is so high that the hand calculation are almost impossible and number of constraint or even you do hand calculation there are possibility lot of you can commit the mistakes in numerical computation so number of constraint is also large and for these to certify by final design a lengthy iterative procedure or approach is required so this is only possible with the help of computer program so those rigorous solution can be simplified using computer based sol solution finding methods and this is where the computer play a vital role for the, in the design procedure of electrical machines like so typically you can say need for computer design starting from we have here the iterative design is a design method is based on cyclic process for prototyping testing analyzing refining a product or process based on the result of testing the most recent iteration of a design change and refinement made and this design process is approximate design problem model then optimize the numerical analysis once we finalize then only we we'll go for numerical analysis as you can see in the typical kind of both the flow chart of
well this here we use the computer for different parts starting from idea and requirement for product layout and concept design then followed by computer design then design modeling typically to develop with computer aided manufacturing to design drawing validate analysis and of course the computer aided engineering finally like I mean. so this is what really the part of the computer design of total electrical machines like and this is of course where you need the computer for once the machine we designed to validate using the FEM to 2D FEM and 3D FEM for the different purpose. The one of the major purpose is the field analysis to look into that there is no excessive field flux or concentration which saturates the different part of the machine. Another major application of FEM is for thermal design that excessive temperature rise or hot spirit are not in the machine which are within the tolerable range. So FEM have a lot of applications especially very large machine or very small machines where empirical relation almost are not really that good accurate result. So, but we use only the fine in this final design motors for this FEM based computer design. And of course, we have used this 3D uh, finite element analysis applied for structural and thermal properties of motors, which I mentioned here. Like. Now, coming to the tools needed, I mean, we use hardware improvement depending on the problem complexity and computational grid, typically starting from a personal computer. Then mainframe and then parallel computer servers used for very complete design or FEM analysis will require such high computational power for designing the especially high rating machine as well as the typically so that there is no possibility of failure once we go to finally programming like also. So there are a lot of tools available from different industries like Python, Luca, then Visual Studio, Microsoft Java, Script and AutoCAD typically and then other software tools are here which really give a code is no finite element magnetic channel and cyst then altair flux then followed by motor CAD software so a lot of software are already there for the design available and which require a lot of computation typically for different type of electrical machines like coming now coming to the design methods the motor design by analysis there are two approaches in by which i mentioned earlier one is analysis another is by synthesis so most electrical machine design is done by cut and dry process and this is a design first assume then the design calculation are made to predict the performance of the machine and performance result are compared with the result desired and if the design is not satisfactory then some changes are made in the machines especially the maybe winding specification machine geometry or variables and the design analysis is again repeated as a procedure till we meet the requirement. So this procedure repeated until the design is satisfied that he has the best design practical build. Then coming to another approach of the design that we call it motor design or machine design by electrical machine design by synthesis. Synthesis refers to the process of putting together the elements of machine in a such a way that the desired performance is automatically obtained. It means we allow the computer to take a logical decision by itself. So electrical machines contain so many variables that is usually impractical to express them in terms of desired torque efficiency and other performance items required and this suggests we program the digital computer to simulate the synthesis by successive repetition of design analysis procedure and problem associated will be insufficient code, lack of memory and computational power and use of expensive software. Now coming to this introduction to optimize, use of optimization technique in typically in design of electrical machines. So a model requires some input in order to make the calculation and those inputs are called the analysis variables. Analysis variable include the design variables. The the variable which can change plus other quantities such metal property boundary condition which typically will not be the design variable because their value are fixed for a particular geometry type. When all the values of analysis variables have been set, the analysis model can be validated and the analysis model computes the output called analysis functions as you can see input with the analysis model comes output and these functions represent what we need to determine the goodness of a design. Now coming to a typically the for example analysis functions might be def deflection cost efficiency and heat transfer process plus pressure drop etc and it is from the analysis function that we select the design functions and that is the objective function and constraint like. So now coming to the typically optimization by trial and error uh, the job is so to speak of analysis model is to compute the values of analysis function and design a specific value for analysis value and the model computes the uh, corresponding function and note that analysis software does not make any kind of judgment or decision regarding goodness of the design.
the only computer is used for the purpose of calculation and designer of course take this trial and error iterative procedure based on his decision time coming to typically this of optimization we use the typically goal with the routine optimization so designer is is fine with the goal for design problems and interpreting optimization result and the design space can be much more complete completely explored here so typically you can call it usually a better design can found in shorter period by using this optimization or synthesis approach like so coming to now sequential steps if we talk about the general design procedure we call it sequential step involved in the design and manufacturing of any product so customer specification and per contract if available should be read as salient point of design parameter to be high, highlighted and latest national international standard applicable to the design should be referred and calculation of main dimension and subsequent dimension of each part and performance parameter usually proven computer programs established with equations and if formula empirical formula based on previous experience curve tables chart etc well coming to fourth this step ensure the volume and weight of the product do not pose any problems for either manufacturer at works or transport at site to erection or commissioning at site and fifth step is preparation of specific specification of each type of material used in the product and as a sixth step preparation of tying of each part and functioning the and furnishing to the manufacturing so perhaps department uh, of purchase of raw material rules and subcontracted item and it's six seventh step as a writing of process sequential step in whole how to manufacture each part clearly indicating the types of tool machine work workmanship and how to sequentially assemble each part and the ninth step is to write the process how to carry out the test on each component and fully assemble machine to check the quality and stage five standard and as a tenth step manufacturing the component and carrying out the process test like as a eleventh this step all the component are assembled and testing has to be carried out on full machine and 12th step it is new design additional test type test to be done over and above all normal routine test is is by and the 13th step dispatching the machine to customer site where it is erected and commissioned to keep ready the normal operation and as a 14th step loading the machine at ready condition and checking the performance and of course this is the step and now these are the some of the references on general books on design of electrical machine starting from Kulman and Nafeng book of 1950, starting Siskin book, and the Winner book, like on different parts. So these are some of the journal books are available. I mean, on electrical machine design, followed by a specific book on transformer design. Then there are a specific book on induction motor design, then a specific book of synchronous machine design, and some of the books on DC machine design. Followed with some book of permanent brushless motors design, and some books on reluctant motor design. followed by a books on step promote design so these are typical uh, i mean references for this course which will be following in this and uh, thank you